Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, in previous videos I've done a haversack dump out. And I've been carrying it that way. But I had kind of a duh moment the other day that I wanted to kind of share with you because I know you've had them too. We get in a set pattern of how we carry things. This goes here. This is how I do this. This is how that. Well, well over a year ago, as you know, if you followed my videos, I started deciding to challenge myself. Is this the way I want to do it? Is there a piece of gear that I liked better than this? I carried it this way back then. Should I be carrying it that way now, etc. And so by doing those personal looking in to is this the way I want to do it, I challenged myself and I began refining what do I need, what do I want in the pack, in my gear, how I carry it. And so that's where the Blackbird Haversack came from, was me taking the points that I thought I needed in a bag and improvements I needed in a bag and creating a bag. But even after I'd created the bag and I'd transferred my stuff into it and started carrying it, and I loved the bag, I really was still carrying it the old way. And so a couple of days ago, I had that duh moment. I want to share with you. So we're going to set up up here, and you're going to look over my shoulder, and we're going to go through my haversack, and we're going to talk about the gear. And we're going to make some refinements of the logic that I'm applying right now in 2021 as to oppose to say 2020 or 2019 when I started talking about this stuff. Let's look at right now where my logic is with this system, okay? Okay, here's my haversack as loaded out with my Blackbird prototype on the side of it. Now as you can see, the pouch is kind of puffy up here and it does do a good job of sealing up. And I've got the things I would usually carry plus a few things in here. So let's look at that a minute. Now I've got my knife just riding on the strap because whenever I pick it up, the knife will ride quite conveniently just like that, handy and easy to grab. I'm gonna take it off right now. Now, flipping it open, we have the pouch here. Now this pouch is where I've been carrying my shelter system in it. Because in the haversack previous to this, the haversack that I worked and designed with on Jason Hunt to create that big flap, I am now using that big haversack as a knapsack, as I've talked about in videos. I carried the shelter, the wooby, the whatever in that. So my mindset when I rolled over to this bag was to do the same thing. That was not a really a great idea. And I'll tell you why in a minute. The purpose of this zippered pouch was so that when I opened it up, I could open it up and get to the small things that I don't want to get lost in the bag or fall out. This shelter system ain't gonna fall out. It can go into the bottom of the main haversack. But in the main haversack, I've been carrying this bag. And this is the bag that has all the small bits in it. I got this one at the Pathfinder gathering I went to in, I think, 2018. Uh, and it carries first aid, which is just band-aids and stuff, my pocket compass, my Bic lighter with duct tape, which needs to be rejuvenated, and there'll be a video about that my sharpening steel, a big supply of safety pins, my candling device, and extra batteries. This is not only a flashlight, it also slides open and becomes an area lantern, and it's got a hook where I can hang it on a ridge line to illuminate an area. I carry in my pocket, as an EDC, an Olight torch, which is much brighter in multiple settings but this is more effective as an area effect and I can replace these batteries and have batteries with this. This requires a charger, so this is my bag one, see? Now, I have my match safe with several kinds of matches in it. This was a, an old marbles type and you unscrew it, it 
swings open and there's uh, lifeboat matches and other matches, kitchen matches in there. And it's got a good rubber seal and I seal it up tight. I have my extra blade in here and I'm carrying an open L and I believe and it's a carbon steel blade and I believe this is a number eight yes a number eight I love these nice thin little blade knives are perfect for precise carving and stuff like that and I'm gonna be doing some modifications to this in an upcoming video I got it with the intention to do it I just been sidetracked to doing other stuff to be honest it's got a little leather sheet to keep it in I've got my Exotec Viking Sharpening Steel as a hone. The diamond hone does the, the heavy lifting of putting the tooth back on. And this is the hone. It keeps it polished so that if I don't let it get too dull, I can just hone it with this and keep a sharp edge. If I do let it get too dull, then that's what the diamond steel is for. This can be used on my kukri, my knife, my axe, whatever. This can too, but this is more of a finishing tool. Then I've got a pair of spare batteries to go for my uh, candling device. Another half of the pouch is the cordage. I have a uh, rosette of about 150 feet of bank line. I've got over 50 feet of paracord. Now, word, if you follow my videos, you know what I'm saying. I showed a video on how to do this, and I will put the link up here in the video on how to do this. Why do I do this? Because this tells me that is raw cordage that I can take and cut at my pleasure. I can just pull it off and it'll unspiral off just like this. You take it, I roll the edge over a few times to make sure it's not gonna come loose. And now, when I pull it, see it will just unravel and won't tangle up. I put it this way so that I can grab it and do it because when I'm looking for cordage, I'm not interested in a ridge line. I need cordage to make a ridge line to whatever. When I run my hand into the haversack and I pull this out, I know what that is. That's raw material to be used as opposed to a ridge line already made up. We'll get to that in a minute. But that's what that is and same thing with the bank line. And it doesn't tangle up in the pack. I have some really bright one for markers. And then I have a handful of bushcraft zip ties that I did a video several years ago where I talked about what these are. These are lengths of paracord that were the odd pieces left. And I created a Canadian jam knot so that it's got the disconnect loop, the knot, and then the cord. That way I can go, this will unravel the same way it's very compact, doesn't tangle up, and I've got a cord for lashing things together quickly. That's what this is. So that's my cordage. And that's what's in that pouch. Okay, that was it. Look how bulky and how big that pouch is for that. Now, let's talk about what's in the top of my haversack. What's in the top of the haversack is a ridge line. Now, how do I know that's a ridge line? Look at that funky color. I use green or black paracord for general projects. For ridge lines, I will go ahead and get these oddball colored, and this has got my two connector knots and it's set up, and I've done a video on this, on how to set up a ridge line like this, so it's quick deploy, ready to go ridge line. Now it's got the quick connectors and everything on it, so I can just go around the trees, hook it up, and be able to hook to my tarp quickly. But when I pull it out of that pack, what is that? Is that just a hunk of cord I can cut? No, the color tells me that's a ridge line. I've got my really slick synthetic poncho right here. This is a uh, one wind poncho that can also be used as a emergency shelter, a tarp and etc. It's got connections for that. And so I've been carrying it up here as a shelter set. It's awful slick. I mean, it squirts apart at the least opportunity. Put that right there. Then I've got the tent stakes in here. I've got four tent stakes with loops already hooked up where I can make my shelter system. That's all that's in that top. The dull moment was 
why am I carrying this bulky bag when this does that job? I've already got a bag sewed to the, that's flat. This should go in here, not in here. So that's where this stuff is going now. And I guarantee you it won't be nearly as bulky as that other stuff was. All right, there is all of that, the everything in there, right there ready to go. That's a whole lot flatter right off the bat, ain't it? Now, and to get it, all I gotta do is flip it open, hit the, and there they are, ready to grab and get to. Easy to see without even taking the bag off. And then to close it, all I gotta do is grab it. That's the reason I went with the brass zipper. This is easily lubricated with like a chapstick and keeps that thing running smooth. Now, in the main bag, in a recent video I talked about this, a quick rain tarp, preparation tarp, disposable tarp, all it is is a piece of a dog food bag. This can be very handy and very disposable, so therefore, if I have to sacrifice something, there it is. I have my big one square yard, bright orange, 100% cotton, rag to use for facing washing whatever i just went down to the uh fabric store found the bright orange and 100 percent cotton and said give me a yard of it and i've shortened it down it was actually that's a lot smaller than it should be i've actually cut it down to where it's like 18 or 20 inches i've sacrificed pieces of it over the years markers and all kinds of stuff this is a sacrificable piece it's also a great signaling device that helps get my attention if somebody is, you know, I've got to get out of here or something, I can get attention with this. It's a signaling device. I've got my tender kit, which we have talked about in previous videos. This is the small tender kit. I still have the big waterproof tender kit. And there are going to be times that I carry the big kit over this. But this is the quick handy kit, okay? And it's just tender, lighter, ferro rod, matches, stuff like that in there with a big handful of really good tinder ready to go. Now on the D-rings I carry an Exotec fire steel that's got a surefire cube type thing, one of them pieces of tinder inside the handle right there. So I do have extra tinder and an extra waterproof sealed up no matter what with a ferrule rod right there, ready to go. Down here in the bottom, I've got my one wind single hammock, which is which got the straps, full suspension system and everything, does not have a bug net. But this, in combination with the tarp, makes up a shelter system. So I've got a shelter system. This is quick up, quick down, a very easy and reliable set. I'm thinking about, because that much of that is the straps. Over, over three quarters of the weight here is the straps. I'm thinking about modifying this to where it will just do like my original mesh hammock did and utilize cabiners and paracord for a quick up and down. We shall see. Since I haven't done the transition yet, I've got a little bit of hot chocolate in here. I had two or three for making me a quick cup on the trail because winter, this is what I carry to warm me up. Now that's all I got in here at the moment. So you've, you've seen what I'm packing right there. And I got a little ditty bag that's left from one of my projects that I have not put the proper piece of gear back. But that is it. So now let's talk about repacking this in a more logical idea. One, we're gonna take the tent stakes, and I'm just gonna use, can I utilize that? Probably not. But I'm gonna take the tent stakes, and I'm gonna go to the very bottom, I'm gonna put them crossways that edge. I intentionally designed this to be long enough so the tent stakes could lay flat in the bottom. Since they're down there out of the way, I don't have to worry about them so much. Now, I want to take, move my haversack out of the way for just a second. I'm not gonna need my rain gear immediately, and I'm not gonna need to put up a shelter immediately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up just a little bit and try to organize it a little bit better with what I got right here. Well, this is so slick, guys. I mean, it's like glass. It's like ice. I mean, it really is. 
Let's see if I can get this to lay out flat like I want right quick. Bear with me, guys. All right, lay it out like that. Put that that way. Put that that way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ridge line. I'll put my ridge line in the middle. And I'm going to start rolling. But before I do, because you know it's just going to do that, I'm going to grab my one of my Bushcraft zip ties out of here to use on that. Now, I only need a relatively small one, so that one should do just fine. Put that out of the way. Lay that side, put that side. Now, trying to keep this, which is trying to hurt like hurting cats, rolling this up. Try to keep it as uniform as I can. Keep rolling those odd sizes in. And roll this down relatively tight. Just like that. Now, taking that Bushcraft zip tie, pulling the end out. Just like that. I now have my knot on the end. Put my other knot in there right quick. Go around my finger, stick it back through. Just like that, makes that loop. And you see the way that the one with the knot's coming through? I want the other end to come through side by side with it, okay? Call that the cinch in. Now we're going to put that over the tarp as carefully as we can. Pull it up again, keeping it as best we can. This thing is just about impossible to grip down tight. And start cinching it up. Just like that. I want to snug it down good. Go around up here. Cinch it down good. Just like that. If this one was a little too short, no big deal. Do it up here. I want to scoot you down a little. You know, the funny thing to me is knots can have multiple names. Whenever I learned to do the Canadian jam knot and I was talking to a friend of mine telling him about it and he's an old Force Recon Marine out of Vietnam and he said well show me this knot and so I went and showed it to me you know what he called it he said oh that's the sleeping bag knot that's how he'd been taught to tie a sleeping bag in Vietnam so that was a sleeping bag knot to him all right we'll take that and now on top of the tent stakes, I put it in the very bottom of my haversack. Making sure that the tent stakes are kind of to the front and that that's to the back to have pad this bouncing against my leg. Now we got a whole lot more room in there. Now we take our hammock, put to that side. In comes the fire kit to that side. Chocolate, slide in. Quick grab rag up here at the top. Quick grab ground cloth, same thing. Put it right there. Put that little bag in there for the moment. Put in the fire steel just like that. Flip it closed. And voila. It lays a whole lot flatter, don't it? Because now that padding is right there. That is the shelter. That is the stakes. There is my hammock there is the cindries on top there's my fire steel that i can easily pull out to grab and there's all my little sundries i can flip up open up and get to really quick that is a lot better ride than with that sitting there like a hockey puck in the middle of it sometimes your 
containers can actually make your pack not as good a carrier as it was before. Um, you know, a lot of people want eat everything in individual bags. They want to be organized. I want to be able to grab it in a heartbeat and know what I'm getting. Well, I understand that. But at the same time, if you do that, you're also going to end up with a bag solid full of hard packed footballs. And it's hard to sit down with those. All right. There we go. One bag, much thinner in profile now, carrying much better. And all it needed was to get rid of that bag. Okay, now. Put her on, just see how she fits. Now, you can see how she's riding. Right here is my knife, easily gotten to. There's my haversack laying flat against me, not bulked out so much. There's the flap that I can easily lift up and put my hand down here into the bag to get whatever I need. The the flap lays flatter and all my little sundries are right there. Now to get into it I just spin it to the front, flip it back toward me like this and all I gotta do is open the zipper. And now I can get to all my little sundries without dumping them out all over the floor. Seal it back up, flip it back over and we're good to go. Wearing a haversack should not be an encumbrance. When I was doing living history reenactment, I carried a haversack a lot. And learning how to wear it where it should be part of you. And Mark Baker was a, a, a writer that kind of inspired me in a lot of his writings in Muzzleloader Magazine. And he talked about the shot pouch, which is how you shoot the gun. Your haversack should tuck up into your ribs, fairly snug up here and should not be an encumbrance. You should be able to lay down, stand up, do normal activities without it being a bother to you. A lot of guys would have straps that were so long that they just swung in the way. You know, you're going down the trail and it's flopping. That is very tiring when you actually carry it. When you're carrying weight on a strap like this, you want the weight to be close to you and ride snugly to you. Not so tight that it's cutting your chest from breathing or bouncing against you in some way because it's very tiring to do that. Um, it's also just more comfortable, it's quieter to carry it that way. So I want my haversack to ride tucked up close and be easily accessible, not be a hassle to dig down into to get that piece of gear I need right now. So if I go to grab something move it out of the way in my thick cover and it's a thorn or something and it rips me open like a box cutter and that's happened believe me and i just need a band-aid right quick to stem the flow of blood i don't want to have to dig through the entire haversack i can spin it around pull out a band-aid clean up the one with a little bit of rag put a band-aid on it and keep going without having to stop if i find tender i need to be able to process it get it Put it to my stuff without having to take everything off at every stop. I should be able to start a fire, do whatever, without having to take the bag off. That's my little two cents for it. Thank you for coming along, guys. I hope this gives you some ideas on how to process your gear and to how to dial your, in, your gear more into how you want to carry it. Please leave any questions or comments below, and do me a favor. Hit that like and subscribe uh, share button before you leave. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.